Let's discuss disorders of the urea cycle. Synthesis of urea provides the major route for the removal of toxic ammonia from the body. Blockage of any of the steps of urea synthesis, therefore, results in the accumulation of ammonia in the blood. This condition is known as hyperammonemia. The blockage may result due to a genetic deficiency of an enzyme in the urea cycle, that is, inherited hyperammonemia, or due to some acquired defect, that is, acquired hyperammonemia. Let's cover inherited hyperammonemia first. A genetic defect or deficiency in any of the five urea cycle enzymes and NAG synthase lead to inherited hyperammonemia. All urea cycle enzyme deficiencies follow autosomal recessive inheritance, except for ornithine transcarbamylase, which follows an X-linked recessive pattern. Hyperammonemia type 1 is due to a deficiency of carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1. Hyperammonemia type 2 is due to a deficiency of ornithine transcarbamoylase. Citrullinemia is due to a deficiency of arginosuccinate synthetase. Arginosuccinic aciduria is due to a deficiency of arginosuccinase. Hyperarginemia is due to a deficiency of arginase. Though they vary in severity, common symptoms include feeding difficulties, lethargy, irritability, avoidance of high-protein foods, intermittent ataxia, and severe mental retardation. The most dramatic clinical presentation occurs in full-term infants who initially appear normal, but then exhibit progressive lethargy, hypothermia, and apnea due to high plasma ammonia levels. The clinical features and treatment of all five disorders are similar. Significant improvement and minimization of brain damage can accompany a low-protein diet ingested as frequent small meals to avoid sudden increases in blood ammonia levels. The goal of dietary therapy is to provide sufficient protein, arginine, and energy while simultaneously minimizing the metabolic perturbations. When the block is in one of the earlier enzymes, ammonia itself accumulates and the condition is more severe. When the block is in later enzymes, accumulation of other intermediates occurs, which are less toxic, and therefore the condition is relatively mild. Hyperammonemia type 1, which involves defects in carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1, is a relatively rare metabolic disease, leading to severe hyperammonemia. N-acetylglutamate synthase, or NAGS, deficiency is indistinguishable from those arising from a defect in carbamoyl phosphate synthase 1, leading to severe hyperammonemia. A deficiency in NAGS may respond to administered N-acetylglutamate. Hyperammonemia type 2, which involves a deficiency of ornithine transcarbamylase, is the most common inherited urea cycle defect that causes hyperammonemia. It follows an X-linked recessive inheritance pattern. The age of onset is usually after childhood in an otherwise normal individual. Patients may present with anorexia, irritability, disorientation, poor growth, papilledema, tachypnea or hypernia, apnea and respiratory failure, hepatomegaly, hypotonia or hypertonia, ataxia, tremors, seizures, and hypothermia. Laboratory diagnosis includes increased serum ammonia levels, which may exceed 2,000 mg per deciliter. Findings show very low blood urea nitrogen or BUN levels, normal liver and kidney function in most cases, unless hypoxia or shock supervene, elevated ornithine, glutamine, and alanine levels, and relatively low citrulline levels. Elevated urinary erotic acid levels may also be detected in asymptomatic carriers. Deficiency of OTC leads to the accumulation of carbamoyl phosphate in the mitochondria, which diffuses into cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, it condenses with aspartate by a reaction catalyzed by cytoplasmic aspartate transcarbamylase, or ATC, to form carbamoyl aspartate which then forms orotate. 
or orotic acid. In addition to patients who lack detectable arginine-succinate synthase activity, a 25-fold elevated KM for citrulline has been reported. In the resulting citrullinemia, plasma and cerebrospinal fluid citrulline levels are elevated, and 1 to 2 grams of citrulline are excreted daily. Arginino-succinic aciduria, accompanied by elevated levels of arginino-succinate in the blood, cerebrospinal fluid, and urine, is associated with friable tufted hair, known as trichorhexis nodosa. Both early and late onset types are known. The metabolic defect is in the arginino-succinate lyase. Diagnosis by the measurement of erythrocyte arginino-succinate lyase activity can be performed on umbilical cord blood or amniotic fluid cells. Hyperargininemia is an autosomal recessive defect in the gene for arginase. Unlike other urea cycle disorders, the first symptoms of hyperarginemia typically do not appear until the age of 2 to 4 years old. In patients with this disorder, blood and cerebrospinal fluid levels of arginine are elevated. The urinary amino acid pattern, which resembles that of lysine cysteinuria, may reflect competition by arginine with lysine and cysteine for reabsorption in the renal tubule. The hyperornithinemia, hyperammonemia, and homocitrullinuria syndrome, or HHH syndrome, results from mutation of the ORNT1 gene, which encodes the mitochondrial membrane ornithine permease. The failure to import cytosolic ornithine into the mitochondrial matrix renders the urea cycle inoperable, with consequent hyperammonemia and hyperornithinemia due to the accompanying accumulation of cytosolic ornithine. In the absence of its normal acceptor, that being ornithine, mitochondrial carbamoyl phosphate carbamoylates lysine to homocitrulline, resulting in homocitrullinuria. Now let's move on to acquired hyperammonemia. Liver disease is a common cause of hyperammonemia in adults. It may be a result of acute viral hepatitis, ischemia, or hepatotoxins, or may be due to chronic liver damage by alcoholism, hepatitis, or biliary obstruction. The hepatic changes in acute cases may be because of metabolic dysfunction of the hepatocytes, leading to a decreased urea cycle and increased accumulation of ammonia and its consequences. The hepatic changes in chronic cases may be due to the shunting of portal blood directly into the systemic circulation and does not have access to the liver. The detoxification of ammonia is therefore severely impaired, leading to elevated levels of circulatory ammonia and hence its consequences. Any defect in the urea cycle and any decreased liver or kidney function will lead to an elevation of glutamine and ammonia levels in circulation. Tissue fixation of NH4 plus to alpha-ketoglutarate by glutamate dehydrogenase to make glutamate and further fixation of NH4 plus to glutamate by glutamine synthetase to make glutamine will deplete alpha-ketoglutarate and glutamate levels. Depletion of alpha-ketoglutarate leads to a decrease in the activity of the Krebs cycle, hence decreased ATP generation. Elevated ammonia leads to neurotoxic effects in the following ways. Ammonia toxicity will lead to swelling of astrocytes. Ammonia toxicity also leads to the elevation of glutamine levels and the depletion of alpha-ketoglutarate and glutamate levels. Decreased alpha-glutarate affects the Krebs cycle, and decreased glutamate affects glutaminergic neurotransmission. Ammonia toxicity will lead to brain swelling, due in part to an osmotic imbalance caused by high levels of both glutamine produced via glutamine synthetase, which only exacerbates the osmotic imbalance. The ammonia levels inhibit glutaminase, leading to glutamine elevation. Additionally, high levels of glutamine alter the permeability of the mitochondrial membrane, leading to an opening of the mitochondrial permeability transition pore, which leads to cell death. High levels of ammonia, 5 to 10-fold higher than normal, 
induces metabolic changes with alteration in the function of the central nervous system. High ammonia levels lead to increased extracellular concentration of glutamate in the brain and results in the activation of the N-methyl-D-aspartate, or NMDA, receptor. Activation of this receptor mediates ATP depletion and ammonia toxicity. Activation of NMDA receptors is believed to be responsible for seizures seen in hyperaminemia. Hyperaminemia leads to downregulation of glutamate receptors secondary to excessive extrasynaptic accumulation of glutamate. In addition, changes in the glutamate nitric oxide CGMP pathway result in impairment of signal transduction associated with NMDA receptors, leading to alterations in cognition and learning. There is also an increased GABAergic tone resulting from benzodiazepine receptor overstimulation by endogenous benzodiazepines and neurosteroids. These changes probably contribute to deterioration of intellectual function, decreased consciousness, and coma. Ammonia also increases the transport of aromatic amino acids, such as tryptophan, across the blood-brain barrier. This leads to an increase in the level of serotonin, which is the basis for anorexia and hyperaminemia. Other metabolic changes include increases in brain levels of lactate, pyruvate, glutamine, and free glucose, and decreases in brain levels of glycogen, ketone bodies, and glutamate. Now that we've covered the aspects of this condition, let's discuss the treatment of hyperaminemia. Therapy for hyperaminemia has a threefold basis to limit protein intake and potential buildup of ammonia, to remove excess ammonia, and to replace any intermediates missing from the urea cycle. The first is achieved by limiting protein intake, and the bacterial source of ammonia in the intestines can be decreased by the use of broad-spectrum antibiotics or a compound that acidifies the colon, such as lactulose, a poorly absorbed synthetic disaccharide that is metabolized by colonic bacteria to an acidic product. This promotes excretion of ammonia in the feces as protonated ammonium ions. The second is achieved by compounds that bind covalently to amino acids and produce nitrogen-containing molecules that are excreted in the urine, such as the use of benzoate and glycine to form hippurate and phenylacetate and glutamine to form phenylacetoglutamine. The metabolic block resulting due to arginosuccinase deficiency can be partially bypassed by supplementing the diet with arginine. The surplus arginine is metabolized into arginosuccinate in the process of utilizing ammonia. Arginosuccinate is subsequently disposed. In this way, arginosuccinate substitutes urea for eliminating nitrogen from the body.